know the word pet? I don't know, it doesn't really work anymore, right? Uh, it's, it, it doesn't really describe the relationship we have with the animals that we live with. Uh, it's, 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 it's like a the rusty old dog crate, and uh, the, the cage door won't close, and, and the dog pushes against the door, noses out, and she asks for a new name. Who are we to each other anymore? What's, what, what should we call it? I mean, I think the PC term is guardian. I hate that word. I mean, to me, it's like the word partner. I mean, it's corporate. It reeks of manila envelopes. I mean, <laughs> guardian. I mean, it, it, I, I, I'm the owner. I whip out the checkbook at the, the vet supply store, the pet supply store. Guardian, I mean, it's not like she's going to turn 21 and be able to pay for this shit herself. <laughs> she's not going to turn 21. I look at the leash in my hand, and it's a piece of leather, it's a leash, but it feels like something else. What? Esther, my partner of 18 years, decides we should get a new couch. She really wants to get a sectional. Part of me dies. <laughs> but I want to be able to get on the couch with all nine animals. It's kind of like a cushioned boat. We drop anchor in front of Rachel Maddow. And maybe the only lesbian in America doesn't know what Rachel Maddow looks like because there's a 50 pound poodle who has decided he is a lap dog. Ready, my Norfolk Terrier is perched on the back of the couch. She's kind of like a whiskered parrot. <laughs> We're pirates together. And Lilo, her sister, is wedged between uh, my thigh and the armrest, and she's giving me this little look that says, I'd really, really like to crawl up inside your hoodie so my face comes out the same hole as yours. <laughs> but the cat got there first. <laughs> you know, I'd really like to go around all the time like this. <laughs> to classes, faculty meetings, <laughs> the gym with a cat down the front of my shirt. My nose is healing very nicely, thank you. There was an altercation in bed last week about who got to sleep closest to the head, and my nose kind of got in the way. Makeup just makes it worse, so I find myself cracking Charlie Manson jokes in class, and I consider the Norfolk Terrier breed standard. And I decide that it applies to owners as well as their dogs. And the breed standard says, honorable scars from fair wear and tear shall not count against, unquote. <laughs> Esther is also carpeted with poodles and a little dollop of terrier. We are close, but not actually touching. Presto, her black standard poodle is lying between us, touching us both. Occasionally, Presto growls at one of the other dogs, or even at us, suggesting perhaps that it is his couch and maybe we want to sit on the floor. <laughs> Esther doesn't buy this. She collars him, and she puts him into one of the five dog crates lining our living room. Our name for this time is family time. <laughs> but it's just our word for it. I mean, Esther tells me to be careful about what I say to other people, about the dogs, to especially watch out for the pet people. <laughs> I mean, pet people are people who have pets but are always reminding you, oh, he's just a dog, he's just a cat. I am not a pet person, okay? I am a dog person. And gradually, the people without any animals have faded away entirely from my life. <laughs> Be careful who you talk to about the dogs is good advice. But I'm a careless person. <laughs> right? 
You know this. Uh, so I cannot resist telling this very beloved former student that I'm really excited because I have a new canine exchange student who's coming to live with me next week. And she's like, Holly, I don't think you can have any more animals. Your life is out of control. And she just finished house sitting for me, so. But it's, it's actually not a recent phenomenon. I mean, I look at my life, and it's a composition only in the most John Cage sense of the word. <laughs> the whole thing is determined by chance and lacking any kind of music, but full of sounds and silences that I just decide, I'm going to call music. Just like we decide we're going to call this family time. Now, with or without the animals, we don't count as a family. But I think that's fine. Because the word family makes me very nervous. <laughs> but for the moment, we are held together by the black crescent of a poodle. Now, when I was growing up in this state, a little bit farther north, in the 60s and the 70s, there were no really, there were big agricultural farms around, but if you wanted to see what looked like an old-fashioned farm, even in that time with animals and that sort of stuff, you went to some place they called a farm. It was a petting zoo. And it was this sad museum of the old timey, you know? It was like a place where they made candles and shit. And the whole time you're there, you just, you're thinking how terrible it is to live on a farm. And what if the bus leaves without you and leaves you on the farm? I, um, I asked my parents for a horse. Anybody else ask their parents for a horse? And um, they gave me a piano, <laughs> which my mother pointed out was the musical instrument that most resembled a horse. <laughs> a piano is a nice thing to give a child if you're not a family of the tone deaf and deaf deaf type as we were. We played music once a year. That was the only time it was on. It was a record from the gas station, Nat King Cole, Doris Day, Christmas songs, and then it was done. We got that music thing out of our system. So somehow I was encouraged by this, and I decided the next year to ask for a pony. And I made it very clear, I did not need a big pony. I need the smallest pony possible, a pony I plan to keep under the bed. And then my mother sent us to Christian leadership camp, <laughs> something that is nothing like a pony. <laughs> there is no resemblance between Christian leadership camp and ponyhood. They even sent my poor sister who had figured out, don't ever ask them for anything. You know, when I was a kid, you don't really know. I thought, you know, why can't I have a pony? Why can't I have a horse? I mean, we seem to have enough money. But we were just middle class, and I'll tell you, a pony is a lot. A horse is a lot more than a piano. A horse is a hell of a lot more demanding than Jesus. I'll tell you what was really unusual and special when I was growing up. Oh my God, it was so rare, such a rare treat, to see a deer. Oh my God, you, you, you saved up for it on a warm July night and all of us crowded in the Buick with a, with a quiet that was not typical. It was not our usual hues, quiet with that faint odor of disappointment, no. This was a Sunday best kind of quiet, one we intended to use at church, but my family spent all their prayers on deer. <laughs> when we spotted one, we'd look for the others. Because even if you don't see them, deer are never alone. I never saw a bear. I knew people who knew people who saw bears, but I never saw a bear. 